this year, a senior official in our heritage industry suggested that Stonehenge might be improved by installing computerised virtual reality machines, buggy rides and a branch of McDonald's. It seems a pity to stop there, really, doesn't it? Why not make the stones themselves available as advertising hoardings, the McStones? And then every summer solstice inside the traditional exclusion zone, they could offer corporate hospitality at a sponsored sacred ceremony to be conducted by those ancient keepers of the wisdom, henceforth to be known as the McDruids. Philip Shulcross and Emma Restall Orr are Druid priests. Philip and Emma had kindly laid on a day of activities to give me an insight into what Druidry is about and to show us what Druids actually get up to. They took me first to the Wayland Smithy, an ancient burial chamber on the Ridgeway. Druidry teaches us to honour our ancestors, the land, the goddess and our own spirit. We were to begin by bringing an offering for our ancestors. It was suggested I might like to close my eyes and select whatever caught my attention when I opened them again. It was the 26th of June, a date of no importance, I suppose, unless you happen to be interested in football, which I was determined not to be. I wanted my spiritual side to prevail. It was an awfully long time. Don't you realise there's a queue? Now, um, I'm not going to come over all reverent and churchy, uh, but I have brought an offering. Uh, seems an appropriate place to do as we all should and honour our ancestors. So one of the first things I saw when I opened my eyes was some elder. It's a sort of a, it's a pun really, isn't it? Elder, ancestor. Anyway, I've got lots of elder in my garden at home. And serious gardeners always say, well, it's just elder, you shouldn't bother with it. But it makes a lovely drink. So I'll uh, honour the elders with some elder. Mighty mother of us all, O keeper of the great cauldron of inspiration, we have been blessed by your falling rain. I began to drift off into a very pleasant place. I felt a heightened awareness of the earth and the air, a respect for the cycle of life and death, and a true sense of belonging. So it came as a shock to find myself suddenly wondering whether Gaza would be playing. We come to the place of the ancestors. Those who have walked it before may instruct us and guide us and lead us along the path. They took me to Abbot's Wood for the ritual that would make me a bardic initiate. The birch is the tree of the bard. It is the doorway into Druidry. We must always go through the bard first of all because it's through the bard that we access the child that sings within us. We will leave you while we prepare the grove. We'll come and get you. And, and shout to you, so stay within shouting distance. Oh, I will, don't you worry. <laughs> Do they still have those man traps in this part of the wood? They don't, but I hear they have wolves. <laughs> it's a tough one, this. I, I really am genuinely going to try and get myself into a state of spiritual awareness of what's about to happen. But <laughs> I'm the only person in England at the moment who isn't watching the England-Germany semi-final in Euro 96. Myself and the three guys on the crew here with me 
have five druids. Other than that, the whole nation is watching that. So the materialistic uh, 20th century um, football uh, job part of me is there. But now I'm going to try and be somewhere else. come to this place absolutely of your own free will? Absolutely. And do you come here sincerely? Because without your sincerity, anything that you do will be totally meaningless. No, I come here in sincerity. Crouch down. No, 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 no. More. Earth. Feel Earth. Down. Down. Not on your hands and knees like a donkey. <laughs> Feel the earth. <laughs> Bounty, Bounty of, of land, land. Be, be thine. thine. Bounty, Bounty of, of the, the boundless, boundless heavens. heavens. Be, be thine. thine. Let us call within our hearts and souls to the old gods, to our ancestors of blood and spirit, and invoke the Owen. In freedom you came to us, and that freedom is ever yours, should ever you wish to leave. I never did get to see the match, <laughs> but someone at the hotel told me that England won thanks to a Gareth Southgate penalty, so that's all right then. The Druids were lovely people, and why they don't put them in charge of Stonehenge is one of life's mysteries. But perhaps we need mysteries. Greetings, <laughs> brother. Well met. I'll leave you with one of the oddest experiences of my summer, and make of it what you will. This yew tree is almost 2,000 years old, nearly as old as Christianity. So it dates from a time when miracles were believed, or rumoured, to be commonplace. Of course, we live in less fanciful times, except that earlier this year, I kept on hearing stories about a man who was said to be able to make oil and ashes manifest in his hand. Don't know how, can't think why. So we got in touch and asked him if he could do it with a camera present, and he said, perhaps. Once again, I found myself going to Glastonbury, this time to meet a healer called Jeff Boltwood. We met and talked without the camera present, and he explained what he hoped might happen. We went into his healing room, where he insisted the camera stay behind me and also that no sound be recorded, and he allowed me to inspect his hands. When he took my hand between his, nothing happened for a little while, and then I felt oil. It was clear and warm and perfumed, and didn't seem to spring from a single source, but covered both sides of my hand simultaneously. There were no ashes. It's either a miracle or a trick, I suppose, as far as a viewer is concerned. As far, I mean, I was, you were touching me, to me it seems real. What does this mean? I regard that oil as two things. First, a sign that we're not alone. There are other, the, that there is intelligence around us that's able to communicate and change material things. 
and it's it's a gift it's a healing gift to me it's 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 the spiritual it's the source of creation if you'd like saying to you I'm happy to be with you because you don't have to be special you don't have to belong to any organization it can be for anyone um, how do you come to be doing this? I, I, I presume it wasn't an option that was put to you by a careers officer at school. <laughs> it would not have been interesting. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how does this come to happen? Well, when I was five years old, I was uh, taken into hospital. I, my kidneys were failing. I was bleeding. I remember very little of the build-up. I remember going into hospital, then there's a blank, and suddenly I remember lying in my bed, and there was a huge light appeared around me. And this light was so, so bright that you could not describe it, and yet it wasn't blinding. And a voice came out of the light and said, you have to go back um, uh, because you have a purpose. And the light came into me, entered my body, and I began to recover. And I, I, I was told that I died for a moment at that time, like the heart had stopped. And all this work stems out of that. I mean, to cut a long story short, the voice instructed me through my childhood about my purpose here and what I would be able to do and taught me how to do do this work. I, I believe I have a mission to go out and do it. It burns. I can't not do it. In previous centuries, or perhaps even in this century, this would have been called a miracle. Do you think that we have a, a hunger for the miraculous? Mm. I think there is, but I think it would be wrong to play to that totally. I think that the need for a miracle is only the really a need to say is there really something there is this is this a reality is there something after death i think what people are hungry for is proof that they're not just some poor little piece of biochemistry that's going to live die and be forgotten this is a way of saying it isn't Contact details for the religions and beliefs featured in this program and the last series of Desperately Seeking Something can be found on a special Channel 4 poster priced £2. To order, just call 0897 188 and the £2 will be charged to your phone bill. Next week, I'll be visiting Ireland, more normally associated with Catholicism, but now revealed as the world headquarters of an ancient Egyptian goddess worship sect. Join me then for the Sundance that made it rain and other Celtic delights.